welcome to Energy FC Off Pitch Podcast, your official source for all things Energy FC. I am Billy Walton, and as you see, uh, maybe to my right here is Tyler Vaughn. Hi, Tyler. Hey, Billy. This is like a broke ass Brady Bunch episode. And as you guys see, also on the screen, because this is our first ever ever Zoom podcast. Is that proper nomenclature for it? Is it a podcast still? Sure. Sure. Whatever. Okay. It's uh, CJ Cochran down below. So, hi, CJ. Hey guys. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being a part of the show. We appreciate it. I'm sure you had a lot to do today. So, <laughs> yeah, I carved out a little little time here to meet with you guys out of my very busy day. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, uh, obviously, CJ is a uh, is a new player, but isn't a new player. We're very familiar with this young man uh, out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Correct. That's right. That's a great. That's a great name for a city, Alpharetta. Yeah, it is. It was What's, difficult to spell when I was younger, but it is a cool name. What, what's the origin of Alpharetta, Georgia? So I don't know. My dad told me that the it's like first city, Alpha, like first or top. Yeah. So top city or first city. Um, I don't really know how it came about. It's just a suburb of Atlanta on the north side. So growing up in the Atlanta area, I'm guessing you were a Braves, Falcons, all the above fan? Yeah, all, all the teams in Atlanta. We had the Thrashers back in the day, the hockey team, Braves, yep. Falcons. Uh, the Atlanta Silverbacks was the soccer team back in the day, and uh, Georgia Tech for college football. So all the Atlanta teams. All the Atlanta teams. Well, um, I know people are probably clamoring to find out, what have you been up to during this uh, bit of a break we've had? What haven't I been up to? Uh, shaved. I, you shaved. I, I did shave. Yeah, I, I had so much to do that I got bored and shaved my face. <laughs> um, I've been hanging out with the cat a lot. She's she's snoozing right now. Maybe she'll make a visit later. I um, thought she would be with you. To be honest, I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, I, she was snoozing. She's in my spot that I sit in on the couch, mm-hmm. and I've kind of worn a nice little, you know, crater into it from the past month of sitting there um what have i been doing i've been playing some video games with friends um been mowing the lawn i have a lawn now and i have a lawn mower that's taken up quite a bit of time i I think i need to get a taller one because i'm having to bend over and reach down really far i think it's just a small lawnmower uh but besides mowing the lawn hanging out with the cat and playing video games just sort of hanging out with my wife getting the house ready for the baby that's due here in a couple of weeks. Um, I think as far as physical stuff, I think we're prepared as far as like mentally being ready to raise a child. I don't think we're you never are near prepared. Okay. I'm, I'm 12 years in and I still have no idea what I'm doing. Well, that's good. As long as, as long as I can sell it, I think I'm okay. I just hope she didn't hear me. She may yeah. Hear. What's the market price for kids? A, ch- days? a child? Uh, yeah. it's be honestly, I think I'd have to pay somebody. Yeah, I think everybody's stuck inside with their kids. I think the price might be Stop it. on it. Yeah. <laughs> There's too easy of a joke for that one, so I'm going to lay off of it. So what's the, what's the video game that's been keeping you busy? You uh, Are you with the times and it's a, a current system, or are you, are you a throwback gamer? No, I do some throwbacks on my computer. I play Civilization, mm-hmm. which is a good one, like a, uh, like a world simulation kind of culture game that's pretty fun but i usually play on my xbox i play apex legends with a couple of my friends i'm not very good but it's a way to like connect with friends um call of duty Warzone. i'm even worse at that but my friends play it so i play it and then uh fifa yeah. there you go how are you at fifa i don't know i don't ever play against people i just create a manager mode and i'm playing with liverpool right now and they get a stack squad and it's I know, I know, it's, but they're so much fun to, to stack, and it's so easy to get a bunch of money. I've got like half a billion dollars in the bank, so I think I'm just going to buy a bunch of good players. You don't, play, you don't play any guys on the team ever? I haven't, no. Okay. I played one down line with my ultimate team, and I beat them, so undefeated. Undefeated. <laughs> just might as well retire. I think that's what I'm going to do. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Well, um... So I know what Arun and uh, who's the other? Who else plays? Frankie both Frank. play FIFA, but yeah. that's the only two guys I, I, I've actually heard of. So you're the you're the third. I think I've seen Frank play. I saw him play on the stream a little while ago, and I think he might he might be me pretty bad. 
And we'll give we'll give Frank a pass on that one because he actually was playing. He plays PlayStation more often than not, and he's playing on an Xbox. So yeah, that makes a big difference. I mean, yeah. the different controller layout, just the feel in your hand, like it's it makes a big difference. This this interview took a turn. I didn't know we were going down the down the gamer route. Tyler, what else? Was what else is there talking about? Talk about cats, but you didn't know it was going to be <laughs> games as well. Uh, cats. I think cats is the low hanging fruit, though. But... Yeah. But it's it's so easy, and it's like cats are never not topical, you know? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're all like cats right now. We're stuck inside. We're just kind of moving around the house, probably sleeping a lot. Have you, have you gotten the feeling from Ellie that she doesn't want you around? Yeah. Yeah. I give her pets, and she'll take like one or two, and then it's a bite. She's like, yeah. leave me alone, guy. She <laughs> likes my wife better than me. She sleeps on my wife's face. She'll cuddle up next to her, but I'm just See, good for getting food. That's the funny thing with cats is, you know, you say, you know, this, the cat likes me more than she likes my spouse, but then you also said that she sleeps on her face. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, in cat language, I guess that is a like, but typically you would say if something slept on your face, it probably doesn't respect you as much. I think the cat knows that the face and neck are important for like survival, but she's not sure if she's supposed to like bite it or suffocate it or smother it or just sort of lay on it. Yeah. And she knows it's important. It's a slow play right now. She's yeah. just biding her time until she knows until the right time. And then I think the cat likes my wife more because my wife will out cat the cat. She ignores the cat all day. Yeah. She's from home, so she just ignores her. I am touching and hold and picking up the cat every 30 seconds. So she's tired of me doing that. Yep. Uh, but she's trying to get my wife to like give her attention. So I think I'd never be able to do it because I just like picking up the cat so much. But if I would ever like not hang out with her for a couple of days, I think she might try to get that attention, but it's not going to happen. When can we expect some more uh, Tiger King content coming up from you? I don't know, man. It, after taking those photos <laughs> and sending them out, I got a lot of messages back from people and they all thought it was funny. But my wife was like, hey, you look ridiculous. And I yeah. Ridiculous. It was great. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Did you tell her that was the point? Yeah. I was like, babe, it's supposed to be like silly and goofy. And, you know, but she's. What, what's the story behind the painting that was hanging above your, or on your mantle there? So that, we did like one of these paint your pet classes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you go and you can have like a little bit of wine or whatever and they they'll you send the pictures in before they'll draw an outline and then you can go in and paint it and i went with my wife i did my parents dog and gave it as a gift to my mom for mother's day that's good yeah my wife painted our old cat which was charlie which looks a lot like our cat now ellie um but it, it was the eyes were really good on it because it was actually touched up a little bit by the lady who worked at the shop she just kind of came over and worked some magic for a few minutes and made it look great um but yeah it's not actually hanging up oh. above my fireplace oh so, yeah be a bit to it i do have a life's not a life size it's maybe maybe six feet tall a picture a painted picture of me and my cat that some of the supporters in, in fresno did and i've got that in my closet i'll have to bring that out sometime and it says uh so CJ Cochran is magic. He has a magic cat. That's nice. beautiful. See, then there's nice. there's the bar for all of our energy of C fans right now. Yeah, just need better a, than the Fresno fans. You have to do at least a seven foot painting. At least seven feet. At least seven of, feet. of uh, me and my cat. <laughs> That's amazing. So you so mentioned we, before we. Uh, sorry, Billy. Cut yeah, you, you go ahead, Tyler. Um, before we got on the air, you mentioned seeing a couple of the guys recently dropping stuff by. Have you gotten to? to visit with much of the guys outside of the, the usual Zoom chats or anything like that? Not really. Apart from Cody Lorendi dropping off uh, some, some house stuff a, a few times and Kyle Highland coming over yesterday to drop off some diapers, I really haven't seen much of anybody. Uh, I do Zoom chats with the goalkeepers, which are a lot of fun. So we do those like every week. The team workouts, the Zoom workouts are great. Those are a lot of fun. But – as far as human interaction in person, we've been trying to keep it pretty minimal in, uh, in guidance with all the, um, the, the ordinances out there right now. Did Kyle bring you any hand-me-down dad shoes? Anything he wanted to, to give to you? He's no. got a, a nice collection. 
Yeah, he would, but none of his stuff would, would fit me. His shoes would be too small. His okay. arm sleeves would be way too big. Yeah. He's the longest arms of anybody ever. Um, but I did. He did bring over his son, Lucas, for a little bit. I got to see. It's, that's a really cute kid. But he just stares at me. Like, he just makes eye contact and stares. And I like to try to make the kids laugh, and he, he does not laugh. It's not like he's not having He's not him. having me. I think he's trying to figure me out. He just, like, with his chin up and eyes squinted, like, he's, he's just staring at me. It's kind of like Kyle, right? <laughs> Kyle will give me a smile, you know, kind of a cheeky, maybe little smile. But Lucas, no, he's not having it. No. Uh, speaking of cute moments, Tyler got to see his new nephew the other day through a, through a quarantine lens. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah, a cool had, Tyler. Thanks. Yeah, trying to trying to do what we can because we had this new nephew born right before everything went down, and haven't gotten to see him. We're gonna miss, you know, Are you the first, first year of his one? life, basically. What's that? Is that your uh, first like nephew or niece? Oh or no, that's uh, number twelve or thirteen or I don't even know, man. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, I became an uncle a couple of weeks ago too. My wife's sister uh, had had their baby, so probably the same thing. Probably not going to be able to see him for a year or something. It's a bummer. It's a real bummer. Uh-huh. Ready to be dad, though? You, uh, you're physically ready, but not mentally ready? Yeah. I, I, it hasn't really hit in or set in yet that I'm going to be a dad, but very excited for it. Do you have the name picked out? We do, yeah. Is it a surprise? Is it Cody? It, yeah, it is. We're having a girl, and her name is Cody. Cody Larrandy Cochran. That's good. Yeah. But, you know, from we wanted to keep – everybody involved including like the old cody legends at this club so it's mm. cody with an a coady coady yeah c o a d i e yeah i don't know if my wife will let me say the name yet but don't do it yeah when she's born we'll post a photo i mean when if you... anybody wants to know they can just look at my mom's facebook she posts everything regardless of whether or not hey mom hang off on Sharing the baby name with everybody, all caps. So she's so excited. excited. She's baby. excited. <laughs> she's excited. She's a first-time grandma, so she's pumped. Very good. Very good. So, any any new <laughs> hidden talents? Any? I'm, I'm going through all the uh, the quarantine can questions. Any? And did you figure out any new talents or any any hidden hobbies or anything like that? No, I no. don't have any hidden talents. All my talents are pretty well documented or not documented, depending on how good do you think my goalkeeping ability is? It's all displayed on the field. How much do you miss this? I miss soccer. I miss being on the team. Yeah, I think obviously games are big, but just like the day in and day out of like being in a locker room and being around your teammates and the coaches. And I mean, you guys, when you come and film and talk with us, it's always a good time. It's just, it's weird right now, you know, like, what do you do? You, you run, you stay fit, but you know, looking at the bigger picture, you know, how are people in the community responding? Obviously soccer or sport in general is, is uh, taking a backseat and, and well, so with everything going on. So, you know, I, I hope that when, when sports come back, we can provide a little bit of, of a light and, and, you know, a positive uh, spark in, in people's lives. Yeah, just, you know, sports has always been a distraction for folks. It's been a you know an escape. So I think now more than ever, I think people are looking for that, and I think we're we're somebody that, something that can fill that void. Depending on how all the other sports go, it's just such an unknown right now. So. Yeah, exactly. What's your workout regimen like? You doing something like every day? You're getting after it. I do something every day. Whether it's like, well, the the team is 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 giving me uh, some like weights. Uh, like a barbell and some weights to go in there. So I try to lift and run every day, but it's usually like either a lift day or a run day. Um, with our return date not set in stone yet, just want to make sure that when we do get a date, it can be like sort of a build up into that. Um, because it, it just seems like every time we get some news, it's it's been pushed back. So I just want to make sure that, you know, just kind of, staying healthy, not pushing it too hard, staying in shape. But then when we do get a date, we can go back. It's, it's kind of a, a build uh, into fitness. How often are you doing Coach Lex? He's uh, training at home drills that he filmed and put on the interwebs. Yeah, uh, I watch them. They're great stuff. 
I haven't done any of them yet. Mm. Apart from that one day we were at the field and we did a little bit of, uh, of that. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's so difficult to do goalkeeping on your own. So stuff like that is a really good tool uh, for, for kids and, and goalkeepers of all ages. And I, I've got a, um, like a trampoline and a, and a little bouncy ball that I've been doing a little bit. But as soon as that bouncy ball gets going, the cat gets going as well. And it's been, <laughs> been doing the cat plan and no more goalkeeping. So. Did you see Petter Cech's thing he was doing earlier? Where he was bouncing it off the uh, – yeah, was three, the three balls. He was juggling the three and then juggling off the trampoline. Did you see yeah. this? It was Lexi unbelievable. It was crazy. Nah, I can't I mean, do you, that. You guys need to try and do that, I think. I tried just juggling regularly, and that's super difficult. Mm-hmm. I can't do that, so I don't know if I could. <laughs> I think the technique is there. I think you're, you're on the right track. Reminds me of Will Ferrell when he, came, <laughs> when he was on The Office and he was doing his uh, imaginary <laughs> juggling. I don't have any balls. Do you trust me? <laughs> That's great. A, That's it a lot right of people like when Will came on The Office. I think it's, it's an underrated uh, couple of episodes. You have to go in with low expectations. And yeah. I think anybody who's seen a Will Ferrell movie should have always go in with low expectations because you're going to enjoy yourself way more than if you thought, oh, this is going to be the funniest thing ever. You got you to gotta, you gotta look for the subtleties in the, in the humor. Yeah, I think you're spot on. Like a cougar and a and a Trans Am. <laughs> can't get it. Can't get anything better than that. You got to drive with the fear. <laughs> <laughs> Son, that's ridiculous. I was high when I said that. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. It's true. Tyler, I think we had some uh, some. You want to go on? We got some listener. I guess are they watcher questions now? This whole video thing's got me. You can listen and watch. It's true. Even you should do both. Not listen. We tried a, a video podcast once with a former goalkeeper, Matt Van Okel. It was not great. We'll just say that. This is going much better. I think so. <laughs> this is going <laughs> swimmingly. Hey! We have a lot of questions. Look at that. All right, let's, let's go. Uh, we jump pick, in? Yeah, let's pick the top door. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I'll, just, I'll start in order. Our bug Colin at the Soccer Chef. Mm. Wants to know, how many books have you read? Colin, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. Um, how many books have I read in quarantine? I, ever, I didn't specify, I mean. Good, good, good. You can go both all time. So it started with Sea Spot Run. Now, um, I've, I've been doing some, like, dabbling in, like, some stock trading. So my dad sent me a couple of, uh, of, uh, of books about that. Uh, recently, not in quarantine, but I read uh, Dune by Frank Herbert, which is... You can already start that. It's, yeah. I've been warned it's very ponderous. I'm trying to psych myself up to get into it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I just looked it up and saw that it was uh, rated highly as a science fiction book, and I like science fiction. But other than that, I really didn't know anything about it. I think that's a good way to go into it. Dune is really yeah. good, and then the movie coming out has a great cast, so hopefully that'll be pretty good. Um, Hyperion by Dan Simons, I think. Another science fiction. That one's really good. Um, it leaves you guessing the whole way. Sort of a mystery science fiction thing. It's pretty good. So a couple of uh, stock books, and then Dune and, and Hyperion. Hmm. Billy, he reading? <laughs> Good time for that. I think my, my theory on that, I can't read anymore. I, I fall asleep when I read. Mm. I think my theory on that is I've, I've read so many books over the course of my education, I can't read anymore. It's just. I've read all the books there are to read. He's I've read all the books. It's like when you reach the end of the internet. <laughs> Tyler Vaughn? No, no. We're still working, man. I mean, I'm going to start doing at some point. I just can't mentally get in the right space to, to, to get into that thing yet because I've heard all the feedback about it. Um, Colin also wants to know if you've gone fishing. Anybody been fishing? No, I haven't fishing. I, I haven't fishing. I haven't been fishing. I don't have uh, my poles and stuff got lost in the move or something. So that sucks. Yeah, it does. It's okay. They're pretty cheap to begin with, but before I go fishing, I'm gonna have to get fishing equipment. And then uh, he also. Oh, really? You just need a line and a stick. And... Yep. Yeah. I figure if I just throw the cat in the water, they 
We'll they go figured, yeah. the natural, natural predator. Yeah. It's a natural predator. <laughs> yeah. Go to the throat. Yep. The fish throat. I'm calling with a bit of a troll question. Uh, how much madness will happen when we get to see a match again? That'd be pretty crazy, I think. All of the madness. All of the madness. Oh, you mean like my personal madness? Sure. Yeah. Uh, what are you gonna What are you gonna do? Are you gonna rage? I I broke. I think I broke a water bottle last game. It was. I just kind of threw it on the ground. That was. That was it. Was it after you were scored on? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the emotions in check, but it's difficult because you get emotionally involved. Obviously, yes. sports, man, sports. But you know, you get you get the high highs with the goals and the victories, but you know it goes the other way as well. But you try to keep it as even as you can. But I mean, you you want to enjoy victories and wins and of course you're gonna be upset when you don't get those victories and wins and that's part of it that's why it's fun um at oaky girl 30 that's stacy rathbun um she wants to know who you think will be our biggest challenge this year once play resumes biggest challenge i mean there's there's a bunch of good teams in the west obviously um I mean, you you got to put Phoenix up there uh, for what for what they've done. Uh, the defending USL champions and they've lost a couple of players, but uh, Monarchs are, are going to be a very quality team. Um, and there, there's a lot. I mean, you could New Mexico, El Paso. I mean, there's Tulsa spent some money. Yeah, yeah. I was I was kind of putting them in a separate category of like rival because like them and San Antonio to me are like rivals. Um, we've had a, a bunch of games, obviously, against both teams, and I've been a part of some of those games, and those are always fun. Um, I put those differently because those rivalry games, and, and you don't have a lot of those in, in U.S. soccer. Yeah. Uh, in USL, you do because we've – Energy have been around for a while. San Antonio, Tulsa have been around for a while, especially with Tulsa playing in the same league. Um, but, you know, anything can happen in those rivalry games. Oh, it's a cliche, but it's true. I mean – you, you want to win those games just a little bit more, especially with an in-state rival and with a rival a couple hours down the road. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of good teams in the West. It's not going to be easy, but thankfully we've got a pretty good team and a, and a very good coaching staff. And uh, how do you think the quarantine time off will impact the club as a whole or the, the team? How's it, how's it impacting you guys? You know, I mean, it's just you're, you're losing that time of – of getting to know each other and building that team chemistry. Um, I I know a couple of guys on the team uh, from either playing with them before or playing against them and just speaking with them. Um, But that time on the field, playing games, playing matches, uh, you know, you, you want to build that relationship and chemistry. Now the other side of the coin is every team in the league is dealing with that. So it's, it's not really an advantage or a disadvantage. I think it's going to come down to, you know, how, how teams respond when we get back on the field. For some teams, if you can transition quickly and get back into it and get up to speed quick, obviously you're going to be in a better position than teams who are, are going to build in slowly, maybe peaking later. I don't know what's going to happen with the length of the league or the number of games or playoffs or any of that. Um, so I think when we do resume playing, it's going to be very important to – win games early and often and that wasn't necessarily the case um, beforehand I thought beforehand it's a long season you don't want to be peaking so to speak early in the year the middle of the year you want to be peaking at the end of the year Um, but I think that's sort of shifted now I think it's going to be very important to pick up uh, wins early uh, when we get going again do you think there are a lot of teams or individuals maybe are taking this time and not putting in the work do you think there's because JP mentioned several times you know you really see once play resumes kind of a separation between the, the guys that put in work and guys that haven't. I mean, you feel like there's a lot of guys out there that probably not on our team, obviously, but other yeah. teams that might be, uh, might be slacking a bit right now. You know, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that, to be honest. Um, I think the physical side of it is important, but we're, we're going to have a preseason. So I think even if somebody didn't do anything, they would have a little bit of a buffer with the, the preseason. But I think uh, being prepared mentally is huge. Like, how are you dealing with this mentally? Are you 
kind of slacking off this entire season is something that's already passed us by. I mean, we're here and it's, well, it's April 21st and we've played one game. You know, I think mentally how guys respond once we get back going and how guys are keeping themselves engaged and active and, you know, thinking during this process is going to be big because it's going to be a bit overwhelming once we've had no, you know, real human interaction. We haven't been together a lot to being thrown in quick three and a half, four weeks, and then boom, back into to games. So yeah. I think it's the, the mental side is going to be much more important than the physical side. Very nice. Hey, Kiki Walden, that's Marty, Billy's wife, who may or may not be in the room. I don't know. She's not. She there? Okay. She's not. I locked her out. Well, she wanted to know first and foremost if she had to bring you beer during this podcast, which is she bringing you beer? I told her she didn't have to. Is that why you got up? Were you getting mad at her earlier? No. <laughs> <laughs> Get out, woman. <laughs> where's, where's that beer? <laughs> you don't have my beer. Um, she wanted to know what part, behind the scenes part of our jobs are missing most um, and why. I miss being around the team. I mean, that's the whole reason why I started working here was to be around the team and be involved in soccer and there's no soccer and it's it's rough. So, uh, yeah, I just miss, you know, miss the guys and all that. Billy, what do you miss? Yeah, I just miss being around the office and actually going – leaving my house for a little while and being able to be around other adults that I don't have to take orders from all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this one can apply to all of us. If you had to pick one player to be quarantined with, who would it be and why? Ooh. I mean, CJ's going to know the guy's the best. So do you, you want to take, take this before and then I'll go last? Yeah, I would say, and then, Obviously, our answer would be CJ, but since since we're all together, let's yeah. figure out – we'll say somebody else. I don't know. He'd be – I mean, is the cat around? Is Ellie around for this? Because then I feel like he's he not – He comes with be, me. Yeah, see? So he's, he's going to be focused on the cat. I'm going to be ignored. I don't want that. Um, That's fair. I don't know. I think Ray's pretty low-key. Ray's funny. I like Ray a lot. I would go with Ray right now. A, I like Ray. He's a good dude. Because I think you'd probably leave me alone. We'd have our own space. No? You're wishy-washy on Ray? Okay. No, I like Ray. <laughs> He's okay. Uh, Frank? Frank, he could teach me Spanish. I'd go with Frank, too. That would be – I think you would have to learn Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think off the top of my head, he, he, Cody Lorendi is a good friend. Um, he, he keeps himself – going with the podcast and information. So he'd be probably a good person to, to hang out with. But I think more importantly than just information and communication, I feel like picking somebody who's a good cook. Ooh. Who can cook? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think Kyle Line has said in his Q&A he's a pretty decent cook. Or I'm not buying it. Proclaim. No. <laughs> no. no. I've, I've, seen, I've seen his breakfast on a daily basis, and I'm not buying that, that he's a food connoisseur. Okay. Fair. I wonder who can cook. Let's figure that out. Omar cooks, I think. Yes. Yeah, he's posted some good stuff. I yeah. think he posted on uh, Instagram some of his foods. Foods. Billy, did you pick somebody besides CJ? No. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe Rafa? Mm. I think he'd be an entertaining uh, yeah. quarantine roommate. High energy guy. Yeah. He'd like motivate me to work out a lot, though, and I don't want any part of that. He'd be like, no. get up, let's go, let's work out. And I'd be like, Rafa, just, I want to chill right let's now. Sleep. <laughs> I don't want to be a better me right now. Lead me when I'm in the mood to be led. Uh, okay, I'm going to skip ahead because we're running out of time. Um, at Hey Lester Herman, that's Holly Hutto. Uh, what shows are you watching? Or movies? Shows and movies, what are you watching? We got through Tiger King, obviously. Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody in the state, as well as the country, watched that one. Good one. We've rewatched The Office for the 50th time. Yeah. Uh, Veep on HBO Go. Big fan of Veep. Julia Louise Dreyfus is super funny. Hilarious. She's great. What else? Babe, what have we watched? <laughs> Sunderland Until I Die. Yep. On Netflix. It's a good one. What else? The Great British Baking Show. Mm. That's what you've been watching. The Great British Baking Show. She's I've heard good things. One. I've heard good things. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, it's tough, man. I'm not like a reality TV 
Unless it's Sunderland Until I Die or something like that. Yeah, it is kind of reality. <laughs> yep. So that's a whole other reality there. Yep. And oh, Arrested Development. Yeah. Yep. Parks and Rec. Oh. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Always good. Tell you watch anything? I'm a. Uh, I'm watching Star Trek: The Next Generation. So like, uh, Patrick wow. Stewart got like the car. Yeah. Used to watch that when I was a kid with my dad, but never really paid attention. So now I start from the beginning. I'm in the middle of that. Nice. It holds up okay. <laughs> and then uh, rewatching The Wire, which is my favorite TV show ever. Yeah, ever. I've heard very good things. Ever. Doesn't um, who is it? The guy who used to be uh, who used to write for us, uh, I think ESPN. Bill. Oh God, what's his name? He I think he does the Ringer does like a Wire podcast now. Do they? Yeah. Nice. Check it's it like out. they're watching. Um, oh man, been keeping up. We do a lot of Food Network stuff. Mm. So uh, Guy Fieri is uh, you got to watch some of that guy's grocery games. World's worst cooks, which is terribly hilarious. And um, let's see what. Oh, I've been uh, been catching up on my Real Housewives of New York. <laughs> been catching up. So, yeah. so I'm gonna. I, I'm getting through that. Those girls are crazy. Yes, they are. And they, they somehow have money. I don't. I just don't understand how these people made their money. But uh, must be nice. More power to them. Uh, Huang from the Defining Moments podcast. He says, "How are you? Welcome back." And then he says, "What is the mental state of the team from bottom to top?" CJ, you probably have a, a better answer than we would. How's everybody doing? Uh, pretty good. I mean. We've got this Strava app, which lets us see like what runs and workouts guys are doing. And it's pretty much filled every day with guys going on runs. And I'm not a long distance runner or a runner in general, but I'm, my times are getting a little better, but it's really cool to see guys uh, like Brad and, and who else is really good? Rafa, who else is running? These, I mean, these guys' times are, are crazy, you know, sub three miles, sub, you know, six minute miles on some of these. It's it's pretty crazy. Wow. Very impressive. Um, but I think guys are are doing everything they can, everything within their power to stay, one, like we talked about, physically sharp, but more importantly, mentally sharp. Um, I think I think guys are, are, are doing as well as they can. I mean, everybody's kind of itching to, to get going back. Um, it's been kind of nice for, for guys who've just had kids or going to have kids, you know, Christian just had a baby, Kyle, um, myself, uh, Kato's got kids, Rafa's got kids. You know, this is good family time. Guys are trying to take advantage of yeah. as much as they can. And I think that's been a positive on most guys. Um, but, yeah, I think I think everybody's just itching to get back. Everybody's staying mentally sharp. We have these Zoom meetings and, you know, the banter's flying around and, <laughs> and, and guys are joking and dragging on each other. And, you know, that's a big part of it that we enjoy. Very good. Um, at Air King 36, last set of questions. Um, is cereal a soup? It's important. Uh, if a soup is a solid suspended in a liquid, then yes. Okay. CJ so says yes. Is a hot dog a sandwich? I feel like we've talked about that on the show. I'd Many say times. I think it's in its, its subset. Uh, or not a subset. A separate set. Not a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Not a sandwich. Hot take. Okay. And um, he also wants to know, or it could be she. Um, speaking of, oh, I skipped a question. When do we get to see the new primary kits, Billy? That's what they want to know. One of the new kits coming out. Oh, yeah, wow. Billy. <laughs> Why would you think I would know? Uh, you know, soon-ish. I mean, what what is time now? It's pretty mm -hmm. irrelevant, right? I mean, exactly. Probably, been, I would say, I would say the. Uh, the odds are we'll see the kit before we get back on the field. So just like we planned. Nice. Exactly like we planned it. Are we out of time? What's going on? Getting pretty close, but um, I do want to run through something, something we started doing, and it's been a while since we've had a, a quality guest such as yourself on the show, and uh, we want to do a little bit of 10 questions, and they're questions that I don't run by Tyler. I just make them up, and they're really kind of weird. So I wanted to ask you, Tim, and we'll, we'll just shoot right through them. All right, let's go. Ten questions. What is your favorite animal? Cat. What is your? Uh, who is the greatest all-time Georgia athlete? Uh, Calvin Johnson. 
Okay. Ooh. Favorite player growing up, soccer or otherwise? Uh, I really like Calvin Johnson growing up. That's a good, that's a good pick. Yep. Favorite Georgia cuisine? Uh, pulled pork barbecue from – what's it called? <laughs> Fresh air. Ooh, okay. Who is your uh, goalkeeper role model? Oliver Kahn. Must visit spot when back home? Best what? Uh, must visit spot when you're back home. Uh, my parents' house. Favorite non-soccer um, team or sport? Uh, college football. What college else did you play growing up? I played football, basketball, tennis, swimming. Favorite celebrity cat? Celebrity cat? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't have – uh, Tony the Tiger. It's Garfield. <laughs> if, if you were a cat for one day, what would you do? Uh, ooh, probably try to catch a bird. Good call. All right, CJ Cochran, thank you for answering those uh, wonderful 10 questions and for joining us today. We really appreciate you coming out, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I know you got to get back to your, uh, your gardening or whatever else has been keeping you busy lately. Yeah, I, I don't want to do that, that gardening work. Are you just going to sit there and pretend to be on the call for another hour? <laughs> no, babe, I've got a an interview. It's run. Got an interview, babe. Gotta keep going. She's not having it. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, uh, definitely thank you again for joining us. Thank you everybody else uh, for watching, listening, however you consume this episode. And uh, thank you, Tyler Vaughn, for gracing us with his gorgeous features. I got you, Billy. Dog I got you. Ginger, ginger steel. I almost, forgot to, I almost forgot to talk about that. Uh, but everybody, be safe. Keep washing your hands. And uh, take care of each other. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Uh,